Hello and welcome back to the Dr. O'Donovan Medicine Made Easy YouTube channel where today we're going to be looking at otitis externa. We're going to be covering definition, causes, clinical features, as well as exam findings and management. This is going to be a brief video but it will include all the key salient facts. So otitis externa is inflammation of the ear canal and here you can see an image of a patient and I'm going to circle the pinna which is clearly red and inflamed and it's got discharge coming out of it. Broadly it can be divided down into acute or chronic. Acute is where it lasts for, lasts for less than three weeks and chronic is greater than three weeks. Importantly, there are two main ways to divide down the causes. The first is infectious, so this can be bacterial, which is 90% of the causes, usually caused by Pseudomonas or Staphylococcal aureus. You can also get fungal in 10% of infectious cases. You should think about fungal causes of otitis externa if the infection is persisting despite antibiotic therapy, in which case you'll need to give the patient antifungal therapy, things such as um, caniston cream. In terms of non-infectious causes, well, you can get skin conditions such as atopic dermatitis, psoriasis and acne. Usually here the skin breaks down and the infection gets inside the ear canal. In terms of clinical features, well, when you ask the patient what the, what the symptoms they're experiencing in the history, they'll describe things such as ear pain, discharge, so pus coming out of the ear, itching of the ear, hearing loss, fever. It's also really important to remember to check the patient's age and also ask about immunosuppression and diabetes. The big problem here is something called necrotizing otitis externa. That's really a condition that you don't want to miss and it's a red flag feature. So let's move on and have a quick look at what you'd find in the examination and management. Well, when you examine the patient with otitis externa, you might see skin changes or tenderness at the tragus or pinna. You're then going to use an otoscope to look inside the ear and here we're looking inside the ear and look you can see all this discharge that's building up and the ear canal itself is quite red. You can also see basically what is pus and discharge and when you look down here you should be seeing the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. The problem is that the ear canal is quite stenosed meaning that you can't see the tympanic membrane very well. There might be discharge coming out of the ear, and it's also important that you check the facial nerve. In terms of management, well, it's really important that you tell the patient to keep the ear nice and dry. Make sure that they don't use cotton buds. Often you find that people who swim a lot get a tight sex stern, and that's because they're getting a lot of water in the ear and it's getting really red and irritated. In terms of management, you can give topical antibiotics. So this is antibiotic drops to get down into the ear canal. <clears throat> and typically, you can give things like Gentazone, which is a mix of antibiotic and steroid drops. But again, go on your local trust guidelines and pick out the best antibiotics that are most useful based on the guidance given by your trust. You should treat for a minimum of seven days, and sometimes you need to treat for up to 14 days. Again, if it's resistant, you need to speak, seek ENT specialist advice. You can also consider sending ear swabs for culture. So you can put a swab down into the ear canal, get some of this gunk here and send it off to check for sensitivities and cultures with microbiology. Some patients might need microsuction. So here the ENT surgeon or ENT specialist will look down the ear canal using a microscope. They'll get a little sucker or a hoover and they'll suck out all of this debris. Then what they might do is get something called a Pope's wick. So basically this is a dried sponge and they'll put it down here into the ear canal. And then they'll drop some of the antibiotic drops on here. The sponge will expand, and then it will just open up the ear canal and allow the drops to get down there to really have a good effect. It's also important that you give appropriate pain relief, and if there's any doubt, check with a senior ENT colleague if you're uncertain. Hope this video was helpful, and again, please leave any comments in the comments box. Remember to like the video, and please subscribe for more videos in the future. Thanks again, guys.